Our Sunday triple header from beautiful Colorado Springs finishes with Atlas and Canids as we are more than ready for our fifth and final game to close what has been a terrific week seven in the PLL. You take a look at our updated standings. Atlas fighting for that number one seed and crucial first round by Cannons. Meanwhile, looking to avoid that dreaded eighth place finish. Here's Cuccinello, feeds it inside and Cannons draws first blood. Squeezed it to Shane Jackson. That's exactly what Cannons need. Yeah, Cuccinello, just his second game in a Cannons uniform. They got him playing up top. You could see him, you could see Durkin kind of help support there. No second slide behind that. Cuccinello, who's got great distribution, good feeder, good vision, finds the lefty Canadian finisher Jackson inside. Just all a little bit off the mark. How did that one squeeze by Morocco? Daniel Bucara muscling it home right on the doorstep to tie it at one. Daniel Bucara brings a ton of versatility, he can dodge from a lot of different spots. You'll see him carry up above the goal line extended, use a little question mark, plant, change hands, and roll back. And on that rollback, as Morocco kind of presses out, he's able to find a little bit of daylight on that near pipe, which is Morocco's offside. How about that cannon? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Brian Costabile dials in. A two-point goal that went thundering to the top shelf. Heads up play here by Danny Logan. You can see him kind of wind up. He's got a two-pointer on the season, but when you've got Costabile next to you, you give up a good shot to get an even better one. And my word, I mean, get out of the way. You talk about high heat, Jay. An absolute flamethrower out of the stick of Brian Costabile. And that's the one guy. There's a lot of talented guys that could do two-point goals in this league. That's the one guy you can't give room to. He will make you pay. Harder there in transition. You were substituting. Now you've got Rabel trapped on defense. And they go right at Paul. Have a step on him straight to the top corner. Costabile again put the moves on Paul Rabel to make it 4-1 Atlas. He had six points on Friday night. Already a hot start here. You can see Rabel trying this trail check. Costabile tucks his stick and finishes with a little bit of a twister to increase his shooting angle and fool Morocco in cage. But it started with the Drenner turnover. You had not only Rabel trapped on defense, you also had Trimboli trapped on defense. He, was, ru he was running off the field, so a lot of daylight for Costabile on that dodge. Chantel, is Costabile going to stay with you this time? Yeah, we might get him for just a couple of seconds. How did you execute that play? Well, I saw that they were kind of lost in transition. They weren't really have slide ready, so I decided to take my short stick matchup and got underneath. There was no one ready, so I was able to get to the goal. Grab a Gatorade and a breath. Thank you. Thank you. Jay. Here's Dox Aiken weaving his way in. Great look from the rookie out of Virginia. Costa Bill with quick three points. He's got three of Atlas's four. Low risk, high reward that late in the shot clock. Today's sports betting lines powered by DraftKings Sportsbook. Atlas deemed the favorites in this one. Trevor Baptiste, prop of the game, over under 21 and a half. He's already got four of five faceoffs. Great feed, and the finish even better. Exactly what Cannons needed. 
Shane Jackson has both of them for the Cannons in this first quarter. Heads up look by, by Rafis on the cutting Jackson. We're gonna highlight, here's, here's Jackson right here. And as Rafis kind of dodges, there's Jackson. As Rafis dodges, you're gonna see Jackson just kind of get lost on the crease. So a breakdown in communication by Ben Raphorst and Durkin on that little inside action between Jackson and Drenner. 7 goals in 3 games and a quarter for Shane Jackson. Another faceoff violation goes against Reisman. Baptiste now 5 of 6. And obviously being so close to the college game as you've enjoyed the PLL this weekend, Cannons cash in with a goal. Win the faceoff, get a goal. I'll ask you after Ryan breaks down this goal. Your biggest takeaway from the differences from the college game to the pro game. Well, obviously, you know, the, the size of the field and, and, the, uh, and the, the, the fast up and down, the quicker shot clock, I think, has been, been really good. I love the face-off rules. You know, it is no muss, no fuss. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, a lot of talent out here. There's a lot of guys who are not playing in this league who could very well be playing in it. And uh, the college game is strong as ever, but uh, watching these guys brings it to a whole new level. Steven Rafis has made the transition from college to pro real smoothly. Just a couple of months ago, he was playing in the college game, just had his 10th goal of the PLL season, now up to 19 points. And the last one, kind of a careless one, totally avoidable, self-inflicted. Plenty of room, and Shane Jackson stings the corner. It's a hat trick for the crafty Canadian. And Cannons have this game tied at four. And Jackson just kind of gets lost off ball as we're going to run this. You're going to freeze it right there. You're going to see Rabel's over here. So Van Raphorst is thinking, okay, I've got to get there. Meanwhile, that opens up this skip lane right through to Jackson. So that strong cut by Rabel grabs the attention of Van Raphorst, who just loses Shane Jackson off ball. Already with a hat trick. When you do have a player of Baptiste caliber, it's important to, to do what you're saying, though, and, and continue sure. to harp on the constructive criticism. Here's Lyle Thompson, and he blows it past Colarusso. Lyle Thompson fires the cannons in front, 5-4. Yeah, the, the great ones want to hear criticism. You know, the great ones want to be coached. It's, it's those other guys that don't want to hear it that never make it you know, too long. You asked how the Cannons are able to generate offense or these extra possessions. Another turnover by Atlas. They push in transition and early rotation to Edwards. I'm not really sure why you want to slide to Edwards outside the two-point arc and leave Thompson wide open for a step down. So, if you, you know, you got you to go with it. There's a former player of Bill Tierney putting one in the back of the net. Eric Law, the Colorado native, ties it at five. And we've got to get your thoughts on, on Eric Law before you go. Just him as a player, him as a person, what he means to this state. I mean, he's... You know, Eric is a guy who has always plays with a chip on his shoulder and a smile on his face. You know, he was... Uh, when I got to Denver, he was at Salisbury. He transferred back and just one of our great leaders. Each step of the way, Eric is, continues to, to prove to others what they didn't believe in him. He's uh, the best player maybe since B.J. Prager uh, around the goal, you know. He picks him up and throws him in. He catches him and scores, and he can feed as well. So uh, there's no – yeah, and he works with the Denver City Lacs program. He puts his heart where his lacrosse is and vice versa. So he's just a great young man, and deservedly so, getting into the Hall of Fame last night. Lyle Thompson shovels it to the doorstep, and cannons. Ryan Drenner scores. 6-5 lead for Cannons as they poke in front with 54 seconds left of the half. And you can see the IQ and slick stick work.
by Thompson on display. Okay, you're gonna double team me every time I roll. Here comes the double. I'm just gonna do a little backhanded flip with touch such that Drenner can continue to approach that, catch the ball above goal line extended with enough angle to get past Colorusso. Day for Colorusso to Albany grads going at it. Thompson in attack mode. Oh my goodness! Lyle Thompson stings the corner and it's seven, five cannons. And after the first attempt, this is all about the ground ball. You can see Thompson pick it up. His defenseman slips and on his re-attack, you can see the Atlas trying to get themselves organized off ball. They don't have a slide prepared. Thompson turns on the afterburners. Rexroad goes for that overhead. Thompson tucks, dives, and finishes. Are you kidding me? And we know what he's capable of. He's shown it throughout his career and yet continues to add to that ever-growing highlight reel. Omar Dennis. He can shoot it on the run from two. Back to Teat. Great pass. There's his first point. Jeff Teat slings an absolute rope to Eric Law, who stuffs it home. Law's second goal, and he draws Atlas back within one. Well, he must have heard you talking, Jay, right on cue. Romar Dennis, after a little dodge, gets this to Teat. Frees it right there. You can see the vision that Teat has to get this through. You can see Brody Merrill was trying to support. He's got a little bit of distance between him and Eric Law. How Teat gets this through is remarkable. He played at Denver, and this weekend he was inducted into the Colorado Lacrosse Hall of Fame. How special is that for your family to witness? You know, it was so special. Even with the rain, didn't dampen all of our enthusiasm. Anyway, um, as, as many parents out there know, it's so great when your kids are recognized by somebody else. And how special to be in, as, as an award like the Colorado Hall of Fame for lacrosse. It's just terrific. Congratulations to you both. We know the parents put in the blood, sweat, and tears. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, let's get to that two-pointer, boys. It's Doc's time in Colorado Springs. Doc's Aiken, the rookie out of Virginia, dials in a beautiful two-pointer. You can see the advantage was gained when Duggan tried to go out and get that ball. Doesn't come up with it. And Aiken crow hops into one from distance. If we had a three-point line, that would have been good from three. Uh, that is... Little mini break, Caraway sails it wide. He's been off the mark today, 0 of 6 so far. Jeff T on the run in attack mode. Ba bounces it past Morocco. Jeff T really turning it on in this third quarter. It just felt like in that second quarter, they were trying to take these opportunities in transition with defensive personnel on the field but they're so lethal when they get their offensive personnel out there, their full complement. And we've already seen it so far in this second half. A quick little 4-0 run, including a two-pointer. Had it in college at Cornell, but to translate to the pro game so quickly is Costabile unloads a firecracker into the back of the net. You give Brian Costabile space, he will make you pay. Little two-man game here. You're gonna see Costabile. He's gonna start as the picker. He's just gonna kind of float into open space. You get the ball carry and then the throwback. And Costabile catches this a little awkwardly, but once he regains his footing, he then finds space on the near pipe. You can see the chemistry developing between him and Aiken. And Chantal's down with the goal. Syracuse grad burst onto the scene, weaves in, picks out the corner, perfectly placed by Stephen Rafis right on cue. 
his 11th goal of the PLL season, and it's a beauty. When they have the ball, they can put up numbers. Coming into this game, they had the number four offense in terms of overall efficiency, the second ranked in settled six on six settings. Can they generate enough possessions, Jay? It's, it's really just gonna be like almost a math problem. Like, can they get the ball enough? And in the first half, the Atlas kind of gifted them a bunch of possessions. The Atlas are taking better care of the ball, cashing in on their, their opportunities, and the Cannons, they're, they're one for one. <laughs> yeah, but you said it at halftime. Atlas got sloppy in transition. In the third quarter, they slowed it down, got the right personnel on the field, and no surprise, the goals have followed. But in the opportunities he's gotten, he's proven he could play at this level. Here's Trevor Baptiste, the scoop, and the score! Trevor Baptiste, straight off the face-off, mop it up! Trevor, as you catch your breath and, and drop back to the face-off stripe, what's been the difference here in the third quarter? Uh, I think we're just playing with a lot more energy. I think we're getting out hustled all over the field, not only at the face-off X. Well, you know, shots to the end line, all that. So we came out of this half ready to go. Third goal for Trevor Baptiste of the weekend, fourth on the season. He's also 77% at the X. That under the helmet, powered by Sun Chlorella, powering the athletes <laughs> under the helmet. 30 seconds on that power play clock. Two for 10 on the season. That'll improve that statistic. Stephen Rafis unloads a flamethrower. That's Rafis's third goal of the game. Cannon's back within two after cashing in on the power play. On the power play, freeze it right there. You're going to see that cut by Cuccinello to the inside. That draws the attention of the defense, and that's all the space that Rafis needs. And Rafis has demonstrated a significant amount of range. That, that creates a free possession for Cannons. Feed inside. What a goal! Spinning around Ryan Drenner somehow. Stuck it past Colarusso, and it's a one goal game. Talk about trusting your teammate. I mean, when Tyson Bell threw this, it was like, what? That is having a ton of faith in your teammates. What a catch, spin, and finish by Trenner. How did he keep his balance? He didn't. <laughs> True, but he got the goal. Cannons back within one, 10 minutes to play. Thompson spins to his left, has a step, and uses it. Lyle Thompson ties it at 11. What body control by Thompson. You're gonna see him lean in and then go to the roll, protects his stick. You can see Rexro trying to push him behind the cage, but at the last second, Thompson gets that second stick back on his, gets his second hand back on his stick, reaches up to increase his shooting angle and reach over the top of Calaruso. And Lyle Thompson, their answer would be the same. Who cares about individual points? We want to win this game. Teague delivers the pass. Dox Ake in the finish. It's Dox time. And the rookie out of Virginia fires Atlas back in front. It starts with a two-man game. Teague gets the matchup and off ball, Aiken Cuts right to the middle, and the cannons just kind of lose sight of him. Second goal of the day for Dox Aiken. Off the feed from Jeff Teat, his second assist. So now he's tied with Amen at the top of the PLL. Point total. Try to create a ground ball, get your wings involved.
Going back to the left, Bucaro delivers. Daniel Bucaro getting creative, and it's a two-goal lead for Atlas. And you could see Morocco talking to his defense afterwards, saying, why, why didn't we go here? You're going to see Bucaro lean in, lean in, lean in, and on that check, perfectly timed roll dodge by Bucaro right there, that, that check. Bucaro just rolls with it, uses the leverage and the momentum of that check, and just with that spin is able to gain a step on Goodrich, arguably the best of the business. You can get tickets and local information. Visit PremierLacrosseLeague.com. Here's Lyle Thompson out of the timeout, takes it himself, dives into the crease, and Cannons back within one thanks to Lyle Thompson straight out of the timeout. So they elect to go for the one. Thompson, a sweeping dodge all the way across the two-point arc. You can see Rex Road go for this trail check right there. And Thompson pulls that stick, a couple cradles, gets it in front of his head to increase his shooting angle and get it past Calaruso. And now it's a matter of what happens to the face-off stripe and the cannons are trotting out Pulver. Eric Law and Atlas run out the clock. 13-12 the final. Atlas will leave Colorado 2-0 and number one in the PLL standings. And at the half, I know you talked with your team about staying and playing within yourselves. You brought that family style to life. What did this team do to come together for two wins on the weekend? I, I thought we played a really nice game right there. I, I think that's an extremely good Cannons team. Uh, they took us to the absolute wire. I thought our guys played with character and grit, and I thought, you know, we were lucky enough to come away with a win. But um, anyway, all credit goes to, uh, to our guys and how hard they played. How about these rookies? What have they provided for this team? Uh, yeah, they, they, I think they had some young legs this weekend. Um, but anyway, they're going to have to keep getting better. Uh, you know, this type of performance will not take us where we want to go, so we've got to continue to uh, stay at it. I like the pressure you're putting on them. Speaking of pressure, this game was so tight. Late, you took two, times, two timeouts, one with 47 seconds left. What was the message to the team at that point? Oh, man. Well, I screwed up the first one. So the second timeout, um, it, was, it was hold the ball. And, uh, and anyway, I, I thought, I thought we, we, we beat a double team. We threw a little bit of a, a risky pass there. But uh, once we broke it, um, I, thought, uh, I thought we did a nice job. Appreciate your honesty. We're inching closer to the postseason. Congratulations on two wins this weekend. Thank you. Guys. A not satisfied Ben Rubier. He knows what this team is capable of. It all starts with Trevor Baptiste, 76% from the face-off X.